Hello and welcome to the DevWorm channel where we're going to be going over saving data in Godot and I think it's a very important feature that everybody should know. So that's why I'm making a video on it today. And uh, it's going to work a little something like this. So we have three different numbers we can add like we'll make this number five, we'll make this number four, we'll make this number three. We click save and then we can change up all these numbers, right, to just random numbers. We close the game, we play the game. And it goes back to what we had. Let's make it, you know, one, two, and three. Save. Play the game. And we got one, two, and three. We change it up. We play the game again. It's still one, two, and three. Let's make them all two. We save the game. And then we play the game. And it all stays at two. No matter what the numbers are. Save. You can change them all again. Save and they will be at negative two, zero, and two when we play the game again. So that's kind of how it works. But before we get started, I just want to ask if you can go down there and hit that subscribe button so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own Godot games as well. And I also want to mention that this can translate to anything, the player position, the health, the inventory, anything that you need in your game, the level that the character is on, anything. But how do you save data? Okay, so to get started, we're going to start off with making the save script, but first I want to go over what we already have in the game. So it's pretty simple. All we have is a node 2D, which is our main scene. We have a color rect, which is just the background. Three text labels, which are going to just display the variable of each of the variable or each of the different things we're going to save, right? Because we're going to have a variable called save one, save two, and save three, and we're going to save all three of those. And then we have uh, a button to increase and decrease for each of them so we have six buttons total to increase and decrease here increase decrease here increase decrease here but currently these buttons if we were to play the game these buttons they don't work right because we basically have an empty empty game we have all i just passed in the variables or the uh the signals into our main script so this is all we have right so to get started let's start by making a brand new script so we're going to do file new script and then we're going to just name this really anything. We'll just name it save file because it's going to be our save file. Everything that we're going to save in this game is going to be or it's going to go through this file. It's not really going to be or I, I guess it's going to be saved in this file. But let's say you have a player and you want to save its health, the amount of damage it does, whatever level it is, you know, all, all this stuff. You can all save it just right here. And to do this, it's actually pretty simple. A lot of people overcomplicate it, make it a lot harder than it really is, but it is very, very simple. So first we're gonna make a constant and this is gonna be our actual file, right? So we'll just name this save file and then we can equal this to any name. We'll just name it user save file and then dot save, right? It doesn't really matter, right? This just makes the file. Now we need a variable, which I'm going to name this G data, just game data. And this basically is going to store all the variables because it's going to be a dictionary, but we're going to have it as an empty dictionary because we're going to load when we load the game, that's when this variable is going to be filled, right? So first let's start by making the load function because it's the easiest one to make first or it's, it's easier to make this first than explain how the saving part works. So when we load in our data, right? So when we click load, we join the game and we want to load in all the data that we previously had, what are we going to want to do, right? We're going to want to check if our file is there or if our file from the last time was there. And if it's not there, then we want to make a brand new file because that means we're on a new save, if that makes sense. So we'll make a variable, we'll call it file and then we'll do file.new and then we'll do if not, file dot file exists and then we'll pass in our variable which we have up here so if there's nothing saved as this name save file right so it's going to check if there's nothing that's saved as this name which means we don't have a file that which means we have no data saved then we're going to go and make a new file but if we do have this file or so no if we don't have this file right which means we have no data saved and we're going to want to make the brand new file. So we'll make G data and then we'll equal this. We'll make a brand, we'll fill in our dictionary with all the different stuff that we could have. So we'll have our variables 
save one and then we can have this equal to zero we'll just equal them all to zero to start and then we can do save two and then we can equal this to zero as well and then save three right this is where you would be putting like levels so let me explain so right here if you have the player health then you can name this here health right if you have the position you can name this the position of the player if you name this if you have let's say you have a level game right and there's like 10 levels and you're on level four the character saves the game and he when he joins back he wants to respawn at level four right then you'll put level and then you'll save whatever level he's on here which we're going to do that at the start because right here we're creating a brand new file which means we have no save file so we're going to create a brand new file and it's going to start all the saves on zero right and then we'll save data and change all that up so once we create the brand new file then we're going to want to save data which we just made and to do that we need a brand new function right so function save data and then in this save data function we're going to var file and then file.new so in here we're going to want to save the data so we're going to want to open up the file that we made so we'll do file dot open and then we'll get our save file file dot write which means we're going to everything in the file we're going to overwrite with all the variables that are new right because if save one changes and then we click save game then we're going to want to save save one as whatever variable save one is currently right if that makes sense so we're going to want to write we, we're going to want to change the save script so we save to what is the new data that we have right so and then we'll do file.store var and then we'll store it all into the g data and then we can just close the file but we need to finish up our loading, right? So we have our save and then we want to exit the if function and then we can basically, so let me explain. So file open, we're going to want to open. Okay. So let's say load data and then the file does exist. So if the file exists, it's going to skip all this. So it's not going to make a brand new file. So if it does exist, we're going to want to open the save file, which is going to be opening this link which will be the file that all the stuff saved. And then we're going to want to do file dot read because we want to load in all the stuff. So it's going to go through all the variables, get all the variables and say, okay, these are all the variables from the last time because it's going to read it. It's not going to change any data. Then we can do G data, which is our game data equals file dot get var. Get, where is it? Get var like that. And then we can do file.close. So now G data here, we can access from any any uh, any different script in the game. But to access it from any other script inside the game, we're gonna have to make it a global script or like an auto load. So to do that, this is this is actually the, the ending. This is the complete for the save script. But we need to make it an auto load so we can access it from our main script so we can load in all the variables to these different spots. So to do that, we're going to go to project, project settings, auto loads. We can click on the save file.gd add and now we have an auto load. So now we can access this from our main. So let's go back to our main. Let's go to our main script and in our main script first, let's access. So var save if I can type our save file equals save file dot g data so now let's say on the button pressed let me show you so on the button pressed we're going to want to do save file which is basically our save file it's going to get all the game data that we have and then we'll do dot save one which is a variable that we made over there but let me show you. So if we go back over here, so save one, right? So it's gonna change this number when we do this. And if you see this, if you name this health, like, so let's say your player takes damage, then you want 
to let's say this is the damage function right so uh, player got hit minus damage then you're gonna want to minus damage like this you want to go to the game data dot damage minus however much damage the player took so like the minus damage minus damage taken and then this would be health right and then you'd be saving the health right but we're just gonna be saving numbers so we'll just do plus plus one but there's more that you need to this right so obviously we need to update our text label and to do that we can just get our text label color rec text label and then we can do dot text and then we're going to want to equal this to a boom, a uh, percent sign and then s and then we need another percent sign and then we need straight brackets and then we're going to want to get our say our game data so save file and then dot save one so basically save one so basically this is just going to display whatever save one is from this script so it's going to display this number and then we can just save data right after so save file dot save data so anytime that you want to anytime you want to save your data this is the command you write this is the exact line of code that you're going to write to save the data so we can now copy this put it onto the one the down one we can click minus now if we play the game you'll see it doesn't work so based on dictionary let me see what's going on here and i'll be right back okay this is this is a very very dumb fix so this is easy we haven't made this script that's why it won't work that's why the the variable won't save because we don't even have the script we we have the function to create the script but we have never called the load data so we've never even made the script so to do this let's just make a ready function and ready function and then we can just load data call that script now if we were to play the game you would see we add up we go down add up go down and Technically, it should save, so hopefully this works. So let's say we're at, it's at nine. Now, obviously these don't work. We haven't really coded anything there, but it's at six. So if we close the game and then we play again, it doesn't work. Let's let's save the scene. I mean, you saw it work there. So it's at six, we exit, we play. Okay, okay, okay. It, it, it was working. Never mind. It, it's it's working. It's just not showing off the bat. So you see we're at we're at 10. So we should be at 10 still. So when we click this, we should be at okay, we were at 11, but now we're at 12. So when we click this, it should show 13. Yeah, because it doesn't update. So to do this easy, easy fix, we're just going to go create a function ready so we can update it as soon as we get to or as soon as we start the game we want it to update right so we can just copy this like so boom and then now if we play you see it updates to our number so if we go all the way down we're at three we close it we play the game we're still at three we go up we're at 13 we close it we play the game we're at 13 we are at 20 we close the game we play it we're at 20 right and for all these other areas it'd be the exact same thing we just got to change up some stuff so file save we want to save variable two we want to save it to the save two so we'll change these we want to update the rich text label to and over here we can just change save one to save two and then the exact same thing goes for down here on three right so we got three 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 three, three and uh, three and then 
we want to get this line so we can update it on start same with save file three get this line so we can update it on start and i just changed all this okay so i accidentally just copy and pasted the other line but now if we were to go and play the game you would see this is 20 this is zero but if we increase it now we're at 19 and what is going on hold up what is happening okay so first of all this is the up button so it needs to be plus equals uh three down and then let's see so oh okay this is why right here we're just updating the wrong text label okay so now if we play the game it should work and then up here we're loading it like wrong now if we play the game so we're at 38 let's go to like 48 well here we'll go at here we'll go to 28 and then here we'll go to negative seven uh, we'll, we'll go to negative five right so all these numbers you see them we x out we load the game and they all load back correctly no matter what number we are at they always will load back correctly like that because we save the data and we load it as soon as we start the game and let's say you wanted a save button right so then you'll make a save button so it'll be function on save button pressed and then you'll have this then you'll run this line of code this is the only line of code you'll run and you'll take this line of code out of all these other places so that's what you would do to make a save button and actually should we make one right now yeah let's do it it, it takes just a second so we'll make a brand new button all right here actually we will copy this button actually that's going to cause more problems we'll just go here make a button we'll name this the save button and then pressed to main now let's copy this paste this now let's go everywhere and delete this because it's going to make it look a lot better as we play as we test it just like that now we can let's line this up right here inspector text save button boom so now we see our let's first let's change this all to all, all to zero so we can see the changes better nah it's fine it's fine okay so let's let's make these to zero that, that can be at 35 it's fine save button close out play the game it works but let's say we make this to like six we make this to like four we up this we close out we play the game it still saves because oh, oh it doesn't save it doesn't save my bad because we were at like six and something so go up change it change the variables it's gonna are right, now we click the save button now let's change the variables all back right and then we load it then it's going to be back at what we saved it at right so now a working save button a working game and that is how you make a save button in godot so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you do learn something from this video i hope this helps you on your godot journey and if you have any problems comment them down below so i can help you out but thank you guys so much for watching i hope to see you all in the next one and until next time stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day.